Monday afternoon. The Audible is on the air. I'm Kim Bocamp with you. John Conjemi, Dolphin Analyst, is with us. Talk about to, uh, yesterday's game. Got a lot of stuff to get to on the program today. As usual, you can catch us on Facebook, MiamiDolphins.com, on Periscope. You can send your questions in via the Miami Dolphins Facebook page. We'll go ahead and answer your questions as we go through the uh, program. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of talk about yesterday's game. But before we get to it, we want to, like everybody else around the South Florida community and around the baseball community, we want to send out our condolences, our thoughts to the, uh, the uh, Marlins, the family of uh, Jose Fernandez, the Marlins ace pitcher, 24 years old, lost his life uh, yesterday uh, in a boating accident. That news broke, John, really just as we were getting to the stadium. Moment of silence by the Dolphins. And, uh, and, and I think as you read everything, all the aftermath today, last night watching things on the news, I think the whole sports world is still in shock over, over losing some guy with so much potential, just a really a good individual, a good guy, you know, and, and, a, and a really an ambassador for uh, his for Cuba, for for South Florida, and everything that he that he meant to. It's a just a tragic, tragic situation, and uh, we we certainly wish everyone the best luck. But boy, what a, what a what heartbreaking news to to wake up to yesterday morning. It was tragic, and you mentioned the, the loss for South Florida, the loss to his family, obviously, but. You know, you could tell the Miami Marlins, the players were, were just uh, at a loss for words, number one. They were very emotional, as you would expect. Uh, but the whole baseball community, you know, could feel the energy and the passion that Jose played with and brought to the mound and brought to the field, quite frankly, every day. And uh, it's one of those losses that those players and especially, obviously, the family will, will take with them for a lifetime. But uh, everybody that he touched, you could you could tell how emotional everybody was, and, and rightfully so, because at such a young age to be taken from uh, – you know, everyone that loved him so much. Yeah, and they had so much to look forward to. So, uh, again, just our thoughts, and uh, we wish uh, the family the best. I know it's a very, very difficult time for them to be going through, but uh, our, certainly our thoughts and prayers are with them. Now, let's go back and, and look at yesterday's game, John, 30-24. Uh, to 24, And it was funny, one of those games that you, you sneak it out in the end in overtime, and after the game, I think it was a sigh of relief in that locker room. Uh, but the other thing, I think virtually every player we spoke to, Coach uh, Gase after the game, it was like, hey, we won, we're happy we won, but we've got to play a lot better than this if we want to get to where we want to be. Well, this team wasn't satisfied. I don't think they have come close to showing what their potential is to play on either side of the football, and that includes special teams. I think special teams was one of the bright spots yesterday for the Miami Dolphins, but... I, I do believe there's a lot more of offense that head coach Adam Gase yeah. expects. I think there's a lot more consistency that he expects on that side of the football. And defensively, boy, there sure are a lot of gaps and a lot of things to improve on in the running game. Yeah. Too much separation from a big receiver on the outside when it comes to cornerback play. There's a lot of room for improvement. The, the problem is this week, Bo, turning the page so quickly to the Cincinnati Bengals, you don't have a whole lot of time to correct. You have to get back, get healthy, get rest, and try to improve on that craft and, and try to make it a lot better on Thursday night because that's a very good football team the Miami Dolphins are going to face. And it's going to be one of those challenges the Miami Dolphins don't play better they're not going to have that same result yeah. they had in that luxury they had against the Cleveland Browns but the, look the, you look at the situation in uh, Cincinnati you look they've got the same short week they had to travel back from Denver the Dolphins have to travel to Cincinnati so certainly you know it's it, it, you, both people are in the same pretty much the same situation you got to try to get healthy try to get ready and the Dolphins sorely need this win because they need they need to have a you know they need to have a a, a a game where they go from start to finish and play well. And you talked about inconsistency. I, I think that's the buzzword on both sides of the football for this team. You saw some good things offensively. You saw some good things defensively. And then you saw some things offensively. You're like, whoa, man, that's not going to work. And then you could say the same thing about the defense. You talk about consistency. Look at this for offense. Throw an interception right off the bat. Touchdown to Devontae Parker. You start feeling pretty good about it. Then you go punt, punt, interception, pick six. Field goal to end the half. Then you got touchdown to Landry, or then you you run to the clock runs out on downs. Touchdown to Landry. Touchdown to Damian Williams. Punt, punt, punt. Fumble. Overtime. Punt. And then the touchdown for the game winner. And boy, just a rocky ride for this offense. And you know you need to, that thing needs to flatten out. You need to find it in the ground. And uh, you know, and, and it's it's either players not making plays. Uh, you know, quarterback receivers not hooking up. 
Running game not working the way it should work. Defensively, again, the same thing. I mean, you look at the time of possession the game. Browns had the ball for 37 minutes and 22 seconds. The Dolphins, 29 minutes and 12. The Dolphins want to be the team that controls the clock and wears the other team down. You look at the game at the end of the game, and it looked like the Dolphins' defense was kind of struggling to get out on the field there late in the game because they were so tired. It's a roller coaster ride mm-hmm. right now for the Miami Dolphins. It's a lot of up, a lot of down, and not a whole lot of in between. Yep. It's either really good or really poor. And I think that's the thing that upsets Adam Gase so much when he takes a look at the plan and the way guys are practicing. He needs them to take that to game day. He needs that to show up on a more consistent basis, uh, especially in the pass offense where you have guys that are open. And for one reason or another, whether it's timing in the pass offense, a lack of that extra second or half second in the pocket for Ryan Tannehill to be a little bit more accurate down the field or to be able to crease another team in the running game. You know, it's very hard for right now for the Miami Dolphins to establish themselves at the line of scrimmage when you can't run the football. So, you know, there are some glaring problems on the offensive side, but nothing that can't be corrected and nothing that can't be done in a short manner of time going up against the Cincinnati Bengals. And then on the defensive side, you know, this team had a, a mantra the entire offseason that they needed to stop the run. They needed to be a better run defensive team. Well, that hasn't happened uh, early in the season through three games. I think teams are close to averaging 145, 148 yards a game. No matter how they get it done, whether it's Wildcat, whether it's traditional run, there has to be some at some point the Miami Dolphins have to lower that number drastically to be able to improve as a defensive team against the pass. Because if you have a two-way go on offense, it's very easy to mix and match your plays and keep a defense off off balance. Yeah, you look at Cleveland, they had 21 first downs. Miami had 23, 430 total yards for Cleveland. Miami had 426, 169 rushing the football. And, and that's, that's, that's the one that really, that really hurts. Uh, time of possession, I gave you that. The good thing for the for the Dolphins, they miss uh, that they missed three or six field goal attempts, and, and that proved to be the difference changer. in the ball game, no doubt about it. Hey, let's go ahead and get some of these questions. And uh, Bruce Dugan asked, did the Dolphins overlook the Browns yesterday? Eh, I'm not so sure they overlooked them, but let me tell you this: there's human nature. You look at a Browns football team; you're a ten and a half point underdog. Browns are coming in. You know, it's hard for me to believe you would overlook a football team, anybody you're playing for the home opener. So I'm not sure that's the case. Uh, I, I just think this is a case where the Dolphins, they need to clean their house up a little bit and figure out how to be more efficient on both sides of the ball when it comes to running the football and stopping the running well, game. Well, you take a look at the way the game went. You know, the Miami Dolphins score, and it was the first lead they've yeah. had in the entire 2016 season. They go up 7 nothing, and then you fast forward a couple of quarters later, they're up two scores. You're feeling pretty good. That's the time where the Miami Dolphins need to, to really – make the Browns go away, but the Browns kept coming back. So I don't know if they overlooked a, looked a team that had a lot of injuries coming into this game, but that team was uh, fighting for their playoff lives or for their lives as well in, in terms of getting off of the loss column and into the win column. So I think that was the same type of team, or both teams were in the same position going into that game. And due to missed field goals and, and creating some opportunities in overtime, that was the difference in the football game. No doubt. Anthony Hammond, why does Coach Vance stick with this wide nine front four? It's not creating havoc. Well, yeah, I would I would, I would, well, disag- I would, I would disagree with you. You had four sacks. You also had an offensive tackle that, that was called for penalties. holding four different times right. and I think got another couple penalties on him. So it's not the wide nine that's the problem. You know, it's just to me, because I see guys – you know, run defense is about being in position and staying in position and maintaining your responsibility. And I see guys running behind blocks. You know, to me, I've always been taught in a running game, don't, you know, always cross the face of the player that's trying to block you. Don't run behind him because you run behind him and all of a sudden it opens up lanes. And I see, you know what I see? I see guys getting depth and other guys getting pushed back. And it creates, creates a big gap, creates right? lanes. So I don't think it's about this wide nine. And look, don't make too much into this wide nine. All they're doing is spreading the defensive ends out a little bit wider, maybe a yard wider from their starting point where they rush. That really is the difference in that wide nine. Everyone thinks it, everyone thinks it spreads out the middle of the defense. I, I think that's a misnomer by a lot of people out there. Uh, how, do you feel, how do you guys feel about, uh, about Maxwell? Well, right now, not real good. Yeah. I, I think that has to improve. Byron Maxwell, to me right now, is a much better corner than he's shown. Made, uh, made a couple good plays yesterday. Oh, no, no. I, I'm, yeah. not gonna, I'm saying over three football games, yep. I think that you would expect more 
Uh, if you're going to have a number one corner that's going to play press, play physical, and be able to shut an opposing uh, player down who's going to be the best wide receiver. Now, if Terrell Pryor is a very good athlete, much bigger, faster athlete when you watch him in person, wait till Green uh, steps on the field on Thursday night and, and you yeah, have yeah. an opportunity to go yeah. against him. That cushion needs to close, and there has to be more contested catches, I believe, out of Byron Maxwell. To your point, though, Bo, he made a couple plays down the stretch coming over the back yep. of Pryor to break up some key pass plays that kept the Dolphins in that football game. So there was some good out there, but I do think that Byron Maxwell needs to raise his level of consistency. And you look at those plays and you hope that's kind of narrowing down that field for him. Right. Because he's been, I think his cushion's been been pretty pretty big. He needs to tighten that up a little bit. And, and you know, maybe you should watch Xavier Howard on the other side. I tell you, this kid's going to be... Tenacious. He, this kid is going to be a real, a real player out there, no doubt about it. Uh, Kevin Hackinson, who came in at right tackle when Juwan James... Was benched. Well, I don't think I think Juwan James went out because of I the injury. He was hurt. That's my personal feeling. You know, whatever whatever the message has been delivered out there, I do think that he was uh, he came out because of an injury. And I, I was heading in for the post game show around that time. I think it was was it Billy Turner? Billy Turner came in to the right, yeah, tackle, at right position. tackle. But I thought Juwan James got hurt trying to recover right. a loose football on the ground. Came up awfully slow, limped back to the huddle. Um, so that's what I saw. On the field. Yeah. You're watching the Audible here. Kim Bocamper, John Congemi with you. We're on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page. You can catch us at MiamiDolphins.com. Started a little bit late today. Had a few de- technical difficulties. I think I think Leon, my producer back there, fell asleep a little bit. We you had know, to, go kind of, to, we had to shake him up yeah. a little bit and get him going. So we once we woke him up, Coffee, we're Leon. ready to roll. By the way, let me remind you now, on Wednesday, the Dolphins travel to Cincinnati on Wednesday. So we'll be doing the show at 11.30 on uh, Eastern Time on Wednesday. So no matter, wherever you're at, you know you can juxtapose your time on whether it's Central Time, whether it's you know out West or wherever you may be. Um, so at 11.30 Eastern Time, the Audible will be on on Wednesday before we head down it, uh, head for uh, Cincinnati. Okay, uh, Jacob Michaels, do you think Marquise Gray is going to see more playing time now that Jordan Cameron is injured? And Jordan Cameron is one of those guys not expected to play this week. He's in the concussion protocol. Arian Foster not expected to play this week. And some other guys that were dinged up, Anthony Steen, ankle, Koamisi, neck, Jelani Jenkins, thigh. Those guys are going to have to get get uh, a lot of treatment over the next couple of days, and you bet they'll be in that training room as much as they can to get ready. And the, the one concern is that that uh, center position. Uh, Urbic came in and, and stepped up. Uh, Billy Turner was out there, and, and Ryan was getting some snaps from him. So they're they're making the con- contingencies, but you, you'd like to get uh, Steen back. And look, there's a chance. I thought I saw before the game, uh, Mark, uh, uh, Mike Pouncey was running pretty good. So I'm not sure what his situation is. We'll have to see uh, when the game comes you up. You know on what, Thursday. Bro, There's another thing to think about as well. Brandon Albert on the last play on the yep, game winner kind of tweaked his ankle a little bit, and I wouldn't be surprised at some point. Uh, to see Laramie Tunsil Tunsil kick out out to the left tackle spot if you have to insert one of those uh, guards that hasn't played a whole bunch on the inside. Yeah, but to answer your question, Marquise Gray, I think he's in play. Let's put it that way. I think he's now oh, yeah. in play this week to see whether he – and, and I would expect him to be active and, and see what happens And with it's him. a chance for Deion Sims to really yes. emerge well, as one of those guys. And look, I, I think the Dolphin – you know, you, you want to have Jordan Cameron in there, but I think the Dolphin coaching staff wants to see more from Deion Sims – more from a cap pass catching standpoint, they believe in his ability to catch the ball, probably more so than Deion Sims does. And I think they're trying to feed him the ball and get him confident in his ability to catch the ball I, in traffic. I think Adam Gase talked a little bit about that in his press conference today. He was very happy with the way Dion played. Not only his inline blocking, because you expect that yeah. out of that big body, but the way he caught the football, four catches on the afternoon, being able to catch footballs that don't frame his mm-hmm. body and then do something run after catch. So I think they're very pleased with the progression of Dion Sims. And I, I would expect, uh, you know, Marquise to get in there as well yeah. and be that two t- tight end tandem. Anthony uh, Shake Felicio, Feliso, uh, do you think they should bench Tannehill? No. 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 Look, Ryan's got to get better. Ryan Ryan has to be, Ryan, kind of, to me, the offense kind of m- m- mimics Ryan. You know, Ryan's been up and down, inconsistent, good at times, not so good at other times. He needs a way to close, needs to close that gap. But, you know, you, here we're three games in, you're one and two, you're playing another one and two team this week. You've still got a schedule that really looks good for you going forward, especially after you get past Cincinnati. Uh, I just think it's it's very very premature to to think about benching Tan, and I don't think Tannehill has played. I don't think he's played as poorly as most people project him to have played. I, I think that I think that you know everyone's hypercritical about Ryan. 
I don't think he's played as poorly as as people really you know really put it out there for him. I think that's very accurate, Bo. I do expect Ryan Tannehill to improve on where he's at right now, but I, I do think it's a collective thing. You can only do so much, and and Adam T- uh, Gase talked about this as well today. Uh, there's times where routes are just starting to come open and Ryan doesn't have the ability or the time in the pocket to deliver that football. There are other times where there's plenty of time in the pocket to deliver the football or to check it down and that ball needs to come out a little bit earlier. So there's a a little bit of in between. I think Ryan can improve on his craft a, a little bit, but I think the players around him, if you start to play to your potential and don't have those breakdowns, I think I think the passing game is going to come along nicely yeah. as this season progresses. I think the receivers playing a little better, running their routes a little better, helps Ryan become a better quarterback out there too. Matt Jenkins, why isn't Damian Williams getting more carries? Mm-hmm. He's making the most out of his opportunities. I don't doubt that. I, I love Damian Williams. I love him as a special teams guy. He's a hard-running guy. I like, what, I like the effort he gives you out there. He is making the most out of his opportunities, but, man, that's a crowded backfield back there. He was uh, – he was, uh, uh, when we were up in uh, in New England, he was inactive for the game, mm-hmm. which surpri- really shocked me up there, especially mainly from his uh, special team standpoint. But uh, I think with Dave, with uh, Aaron Foster out, I think you'll see him get more carries. I, Adam Gaze did exactly what he did going into that football game. What he said going into that football game, he was going to get every, everybody an opportunity, and whoever gets hot, and no one really got hot to where you're going to just keep feeding them. So he so he gave everyone a shot. Isaiah Pete had some uh, had some opportunities. He had opportunities. Jay Jai had the opportunity. There's so, no doubt they were fresh. Yes. Yes. You know, everybody got a chance to carry the football. And I think what Damian does best is catch the football out of the backfield. And I, I think you saw that yep. on the touchdown where he's able to catch it cleanly, turn up field, and be athletic. He's got that quick twitch. And he, as you said, Bo, he's very good on special yep. teams. So this is a guy that's always going to be in the mix. Yeah, no doubt. You're watching the Audible. Kimbo Camper, John Kinjemi here with you. You can catch the Audible every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page. You can watch the archives on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page as well as MiamiDolphins.com where you can also see the Audible. We're also up on Periscope. Uh, you can send their question, the questions in via Facebook. And let me remind you again, Wednesday's program, uh, unusual, it'll start at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. So go ahead and put that down so you don't miss it. Uh, Glenn Gerber, what does the defense need to do to stop the running game? Well, John, I think we talked about it a little bit. I think they've just got to play better technique. You know, sometimes, sometimes run defense is about being patient. Staying with your guys, staying with your guys, not trying to make that play that you think is going to be a big play. You know, sometimes it's all right to play and make a play at the line of scrimmage. Sometimes it's all right not to make a play right. if what you're doing allows somebody else to make the tackle. And, and I think that's what they've – I think to me it comes down to fundamentals of how they play defensively. And I think what you're talking to is really gap integrity. Yes. You know, doing your job, and that allows others to make plays. And that's why you've seen Alonzo with a high tackle count. You've seen Jones come out from the safety spot and, and tackle guys – around the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage. A lot of tackles for loss out of Rashad Jones. So there's a lot of things that, as you said, either getting up the field when you're not supposed to or coming down if you're a defensive end and you're by the center guard gap. You know, there's a lot of things that need to happen, but I think just gap integrity helps out that run defense as well. The other thing they've got to do, they've got to get run support. Someone's got to get up the field. It it seems like more times than not they're playing with a soft corner. It allows that back to get outside and turn the corner. That's where they pick up. That's where they set up. Somebody's got to get – the idea is you need someone – you want someone on the outside to get up field to force everything back inside where the Calvary's at in there and let them do the job. So I think that's another thing that they've got to they've got to do better when when it comes to run defense. Natalie Strong Marin says, uh, "What are we going to do to boost our secondary?" Look, I think our secondary, to be to be honest with you, from from um, uh, from Xavier to Caduce to Rashad Jones, I'm very very happy with that portion. Of our say Byron Maxwell, we talked about that. He's got to be a little tighter in his coverage. He's got to play a little better. Uh, and then when you get in the nickel package, you know, those guys coming in, Bobby McCain, they've got to be a little tighter in there. But but I tell you what, from a starting standpoint, what three of those four guys out there, I got no problem whatsoever with well, those guys. Well, we had a we thought we had a huge question mark because you were gonna have a lot of youth and inexperience at one of the corners. Well, I think Xavier Howard yeah. has proven uh the Dolphins scouting staff the the coaching staff the way he's been able to not really practice in the preseason and come into the regular season and play at a high level i really like what he's doing and i think that needs to be contagious yeah. you know that needs to to drift over and be more consistent on the other side so you don't have their prime the opposition's primary 
wide receiver, you know, get 11, 12, 15 targets on an afternoon. And I, I do believe that, you know, Kadus, Abdul Kadus on the inside and, and Rashad Jones, they've done an excellent yeah. job of being interchangeable and yes. guys that have been very aggressive in run support, but being able to also stay in coverage and not have the ball go over their heads. That's something we haven't seen down yeah. the middle of the football yeah, field. No doubt. Uh, Ron uh, Moreau, do you think the Finns need to run the ball more no, I don't think they need to run the ball more. I think they've got to be more effective when they run the ball. They ran the ball 25 times in the game yesterday. They threw the ball 36 times. So, you, you know, it's close to that balance you're looking for. So, I don't think it's a matter of running the ball more. I just think when they run the ball, the offensive line's got to give them better lanes to run in, and they've got to find that spot, and they've got to hit it. And, and we've got to see more run. We've got to see some runs start breaking for this football team. You know, they're grinding out two yards, three yards, four the yards. Explosive yeah, they're explosive Yeah, you want that guy. You like to see that guy break break out and give you 15, 20, 25 yards. I think get those Kenyon types Drake, of things. I think Kenyon, Kenyon Drake is a guy that ability. can do it, no doubt. But I think that's it. I, I don't think they need to run it more. I think you got to be more effective running the ball. Uh, David Cohen, why can't they get the ball to a tight end <laughs> in the middle of the field? Also, where are the screen plays? Well, I tell you, the screen plays weren't working very no. well. Uh, if They've you took a look that, at that yeah, game, yeah, yeah. it was a negative play to yeah. Damian Williams, I believe, because there was so much pressure in the yep. pocket uh, to Ryan Tannehill that Damian tried to make a big play. And I also don't like the bubble screen outside yeah. in the trips formation because that seems to be a negative play yes. as well. So uh, there are a lot of things I was thinking about in writing my keys for this week. And I, I think it's get get to the schemes that get it to your playmakers. You know Jarvis Landry is one of those guys that is dependable, and you know that Kenny Stills is on his way, and you hopefully that Devontae Parker's on his way. So if you can mix in that tight end, and it looks like it's going to be Deion Sims yeah. this week, getting, getting and controlling the middle, I think you can get away from some of that screen play. Yeah. Uh, Tony, what do you grade the play calling? Now this seems to be now, – now this is starting to – this is starting to rear its head out here Maybe as a I play call. You know, Adam Gage, I don't know. I don't know about his play calling. Look, I, I, don't, I don't think it's – I've never been a guy that, that's all about play calling. I, I'm more of an execution guy that's right. than a play calling guy. If you ex play, execute any play properly, it's, it's probably going to work for you. I think it's just a lack of execution. I, I'm not concerned with the play calling whatsoever. You know, it, because – well, first of all, you know, one thing that he's got to do in this offense is they've got to move the chains. Right. I, I mean, the problem with the, with this is, you know, what do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six punts in the game yesterday. It, it, way too many. Way too many punts. And I think that, it, it, that's what's... And Matt Darr had an unbelievable yes, day. Yes. And it, thankfully so, because the Miami Dolphins, as you said, had to kick the football away and play a little field position yeah. as the game went along there. So I don't think it's the play calling at all, Bo. I, I think it's more about execution. Yeah. But I would say that... Through three games, Adam Gase is, is very efficient and proficient at getting out of things that he doesn't feel like can work right now for the Miami yeah. Dolphins and getting to schemes and getting to, to route combinations that will work. Yeah. And, and look at it. He, he's only been through three games. Forget the preseason games. He's been through three regular season games. He's just getting a feel for his team, what they can do, who I can trust with this, who I can trust doing that. So his play calling is going to grow as he goes on. <coughs> Excuse me. You know what? I got I coughed up because this next question is gonna <coughs> give me a little bit of a little agita there. Uh, you're watching the Audible here, Kimbo Camber, John Kenjemi with you. You can catch us on Wednesday, 11:30 a.m. Eastern time, so you can adjust your time that way. Uh, you can see us on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page, on MiamiDolphins.com, as well as on Periscope. Send your name, send your questions in via the Facebook page. Here's the one I got to tie block bleeder Dawkins. Do you guys think that Deion Jordan? will help the run defense. I don't think Deion Jordan's going to help anything, to be honest with you. I don't think he's practiced. As I, I don't think he's... No, a, I, don't, I don't think, I don't think he's going to be I haven't, available. I haven't seen him run. I haven't seen him run since... Uh, since Yeah, I'll take that. I haven't seen him run since uh, since he showed up here, to be honest with you. You know what, Bo? I don't know if he's going to be available. Oh, yeah, that was good hands right, right there. there huh? I, you know, Jeff's got a pretty good arm as well. Right I, I don't think that he's going to be available. Yeah. You know, so I don't. I don't think that's a problem. The Dolphins really don't need to attend to right now mm -hmm. until until you get to week six, seven, or eight, yeah, and six he has weeks until he's available. That's but, right. So <clears> I, I think look, that's something that really doesn't concern look, the coaching staff. Yeah, no, right now. it doesn't right now. I mean, they're about who's who's available to play. But I, I anything even after six weeks, I just don't. I, I just I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. I'll put it to you that way. Okay, Jeremy Arango, uh, what position do you think we'll go for <laughs> in the draft? Are we on the draft? Ah, are we or free we're agency? On the draft. No, no. What free agency is a little bit think, before the draft. What position do you think we'll go for in next year's draft? You know what, Jeremy? 
Next year when the draft comes around, ask that question again. <laughs> Miguel de Jesus, how do you guys think that Sue is coming along with the Dolphins? Is he making a big impact? I watch Sue a lot, you know. I think he's playing great. I do too. I think he's doing a lot of good things. One thing that surprised me, I see him getting a little more a little more one-on-one block blocks out there. It seemed like last year, every time he was double teamed, sometimes triple teamed, still gets double teamed, but I see more opportunity. And when I see him singled up, He's always making some. He's always causing some commotion in there. I, I think he's playing well. I think he's creating. A, he's creating problems in the middle. And I tell you what, I, I'm surprised to see him getting. He gets out in the field. I mean, I see him running sideline to sideline, making plays. So, I, so far, I'm, I'm I'm very happy with the way he's playing. You know, the one thing I think that Mario Williams needs to get used to is having a Dominican Sue on the inside because he's got a great push. Yep. And he's pushing guys, quarterbacks, to the yep. outside. And if you can just kind of. Stay at home, uh, yep. you know, and be on that outside. You're going to run into a couple sacks if you're Mario Williams. So I, I think getting used to playing with new players and getting around uh, the scheme yep. of what Van Joseph wants to do, I think Dominican Sue has been a force in the middle. He's getting pushed. Uh, he's really causing havoc yeah. in the middle of that Dolphins defense. Don't don't uh, don't sleep on Jordan Phillips either. No, he's, I mean, he's, I mean been, he's in there playing some very very good football for you. He's getting the push. He's running sideline to sideline. So I mean, I, I think from the defensive like the tackle position, yeah, going. I do very much so. Uh, Juwan James looks like this from Fred Walker. Oh, I got emojis up here. Somehow I pushed <laughs> the wrong thing. Uh, Juwan James looks like he's really laboring out there on the right. What's your take? <clears throat> You know, Juwan James is. I think Juwan James is one of those guys that he he's just a he takes his lunch pail to, to the to the office and works hard every day. He's not going to blow anybody away. He's not going to make you sit back and go, "Wow, watch this guy." I think he's just a hardworking, tough, solid right tackle. You know, he's gotten beaten a couple times, but I, I'm I'm not. Uh, if if I look at that offense and things I'm worried about, he's not. You know, Juwan James the isn't list. on. He's not on the top of my list. He's I agree not even with close you. to the top of my list. I, I agree with you. I, I like the way Juwan James. His attitude, his demeanor. I, I just think that this Miami Dolphin team and this coaching staff is trying to push all the right buttons. Yes. They're trying to get guys to play at their optimum. You know, they're trying to guy, get guys that they feel like can have a little bit more, and their expectations are a little bit more for certain players. Yeah. So they want to, to push these guys to to get better, consistent production out of them, and that may be one of the guys the staff is doing it to. Yeah, Ryan Monroe. I think we have a running game. His name is Kenyon Drake. Make him a starter. I like Kenyon Drake. I do too. You know, I would like to see more of Kenyon Drake. Um, and I think everybody's out there. Uh, you know, he got the chance to start in the game uh, uh, last like yesterday. I Liked what I saw. I think we have more carries. And uh, who knows? Maybe by the time uh, the season's over, Kenyon Drake is is solidified as a starter. I don't disagree with you. I would like to see him. Uh, give many more carries in the football game. Andrew DeLuise Bow, it's uh, Neville Hewitt time to shine. Will he succeed? I think Neville he did some good. he did some good things out there yesterday when he came in after we lost uh, uh, Jelani. Was Jelani out. Cole was Cole, out. Yeah. I think when Jelani went down, then Neville came in right. and played at that point. Neville did some good things Open out there. Open field tackles. Uh, Very athletic. Yes. Runs well. Gets all over the problem that Neville has. Inconsistent in knowing where he's supposed to be and understanding what his assignments. I think that's the difference. That's why Pacinger a lot of times uh, gets the opportunity to come in first when they need an extra linebacker. But Pacinger was uh, was. Um, uh, inactive yesterday for the game, but yeah, I, I love Neville Hewitt. He's just got to be a little bit more. He's got to he's got to understand what his job is, his scheme. But as far as a player, love Neville Hewitt and what he does out there. Uh, do we come, uh, Travis Lee? Do we come out of no huddle versus Cincy to try to get a fast start? Um, I, I think they need to do whatever. They look. They got off to a pretty quick start other than the interception. Next time they got the ball, they put it in the end zone. Beautiful play to uh, uh, to Devontae Parker. Boy, I'd like to see. I'd like to see more of that yesterday. I think it's all predicated on how they start. Can they get the initial yes. first down yep. to get in that upper tempo, to, to move the football, to get out of the huddle and call plays from the line of scrimmage? I think that dictates a lot of the yep. tempo and pace that Adam Gase wants to get to offensively. If they can create positive plays and stack them up together, that allows the tempo yep. and Ryan Tannehill to kind of take control at the line of scrimmage where the Dolphin offense doesn't have to huddle. You, 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 can't, you can't get that going when you're punting the ball all the time. It's hard. And, and that's it. I mean, you know, you talk to Adam about his offense. He's all we need is first down. We need a first down to kind of get things going. And, and, yeah, 
They need a flow to that offense, and they need to stay on the field. In order to do that, you have to be better on third down. You can't be two of ten and, you know, four of 16 or whatever it was the last couple of games. They have to be better on first and second down to stay out of those third and long situations. And speaking of the no huddle, I think once you get – once you get a – if you – Dolphins get the ball, they start a drive, they get two first downs, and I think you see no huddle pretty much throughout because so. that's what they want. They want to get that team back on their heels, also put, it, put them in a position defensively where late in the game they're worn out because you've done that. But you can't do that if you can't move the chains. Uh, Milton A. Bird Jr., do you think the Dolphins called too many pass plays when leading by 10 points? No, I don't no. think so. I, I think sometimes the way that the Dolphins play, they're controlling – the tempo of the game with the pass. Yep. You know, there that's like a, a an extension of the running game. So if the running game wasn't setting any hair on fire yep. as far as I could tell. So you have to be able to go to your playmakers. Your playmakers are primarily in your passing game. And that's the way you control the tempo and control the pace and hopefully get more consistent at moving the football. So I, I no, I don't I don't disagree with the way the game was called. Yeah, no, I and mean, look you're looking for balance, twenty five runs, thirty six passes. Not like they had fifty passes and fifteen runs or something like that. So I I, I kinda like that balance where they're at right now. Matt Jenkins, who wants to see Jakeem Grant run a jet sweep? I, I'd like to see Jakeem Grant get his get his opportunity in the backfield, coming out of the backfield, running a sweep, some kind of thing, try, try to get him isolated, try to get him outside. I just don't think he's ready from a standpoint of understanding what they're trying to do. You can bet that Adam Gaze, in the back of his mind, when he looks at Jakeem Grant, I guarantee he's got a handful of plays that he's ready to stick in there. Jakeem just needs to get up to speed on that. Well, he needs his opportunities yes. in, in special teams. Right now, if he had one return. It's almost a wasted roster spot for game day because he can't get his hands on the football. So if you're going to get him into the offense, where do you, who do you take out right now? I, yeah, I don't no. know who you take out of the football game to get a guy that you're not sure what you're going to get. No. Because if he was that good, he'd be in the starting lineup. And, and look, you, you, the, the dicta... The the, the 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 situation in the game dictates too. Now, look, had you gone out and played Cleveland and you're up twenty one to ten, you know, and you're and you're blowing them out. Beat okay, them. let's throw them in there. Yeah. Let's let's give them a chance. But you know, in in games that are tight, and the ball has been in tight games every single week. You know, you're not going to put a guy back there that you're not a hundred percent sure he knows what he's doing and take a chance on him until you get an opportunity. So. Uh, I, I think that'll come a little bit later on. All right, you're watching the Audible, Kimbo Camper, John Conjemi with you again. Let me remind you, the Audible on Wednesday will be 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. You can catch us. The Dolphins are making an early trip up to Cincinnati. That's why we're going to be early on that day. You can check out the archives on, on MiamiDolphins.com or the Miami Dolphins Facebook page. David Blow, it seems like every team gashes us in the run game. What do they need to do to prevent big runs? Well, I think we've we, talked yeah. about this uh, time and time again today. Again, again, to me, it comes back to execution, fundamentals, and just doing the job that you're supposed to do, not trying to make the big play. Brian Fawcett, we had, we've had good luck against Cincinnati. Uh, good luck against Cincinnati. I tell you, that's a tough place to play up there. I mean, I mean that's a good sneaky, football team. sneaky, tough play, good football team. And, uh, boy, they've got a receiver out there that's, uh, you know, a, a big-time, big-time playmaker that uh, that you bet they're going to go out to early and often in the football game. And they've got a, a really good running attack because yeah. they've got a bigger back, I believe, in Hill, yeah. Jeremy Hill, and then Giovanni Bernard yeah. kind of is that change-up guy and the catches it out of the backfield. So not only do they have Andy Dalton, who's a very good quarterback, but they have the, the playmakers on the outside. Tyler Boyd's a, yeah. a young rookie receiver that can get it done on the outside. I don't believe uh, the tight end is playing uh, again for, for the Cincinnati Eifert. Yeah, Tyler Eifert. So uh, there might be a, a situation where you can you know, isolate one position yeah. and eliminate that. But they do have playmakers on the outside, but it's, it's the guy that, uh, you know, that, that Hill and Giovanni Bernard on the inside that have really been running the football quite well, and that's where the Dolphins' problems start up front. And you can bet they're going to want to – they're going to give them a big dose of running the football until the Dolphins – uh, figure out that they're, they're, they've got to do something to stop it. And again, it goes to your Glenn Haber. Bo, you know, run defense, is it scheme or is it, is it the players? Why are they getting run over? I, I don't think they're getting run over. I just think, like I said, I, I just see separation. You know, I see one guy penetrating upfield, another guy at the line of scrimmage creating lanes. I see guys running around blocks and, and, and those types of things. And again, getting upfield, creating a, an edge there that, to, that forces the ball back inside. Those are all basic things that you need to do if you're going to have a good good run defense. Guys have to be disciplined with what they're doing. I, I think that's the issue. And 
I, I, I certainly don't think it's that the players are getting pushed around no, out there. No, and you, what you'd like to see, Bo, too, is is either a linebacker or a safety. Somebody get their hands on the football to create some yeah. juice on that side of the football, change field position, get a sudden change, and get a quick play score, and kind of capitalize and yeah. turn things around for the, the momentum on defense. And all, turnovers always do that. You know, you yeah. always get a jump, you get a boost. You'd like to see a forced fumble, not so much from the pocket, because we've seen Cam Wake do that, but in the run game. You know, getting a hand on a football or a catch, you strip it and you get a scoop and a potential score. So something to generate some some noise on the yeah. back end of that defense. Yeah. Uh, Muddy Waters. There you go, Muddy. I like John, that. what kind of game do you see in Cincy on Thursday? Love your music, by the way. Oh, thank you. I, I uh, Muddy Waters. I, I like something fast. You yeah. know, something starting fast where you don't turn the football over and you can kind of dictate tempo. Yeah. If you can do that, you're in a four-quarter ball game with yeah. the Cincinnati Bengals on a short week. If it's a couple three and outs and, and it doesn't go well early, then you've got to hold on for dear life to get to the yep. second half and hope that you're within a touchdown because it's an explosive team you're playing against yep. with an aggressive defense. Although they had their, the back end of the of the Cincinnati defense, I think it's seven or nine touchdown passes already against yep. that secondary. So there are some opportunities in the passing game. Okay, uh, Travis Lee, you think our corners need to get their hands on the receivers more at the line of scrimmage? I I personally I, I like press coverage. Especially, especially when you've got a, especially when you got people up front that can rush the passer and put pressure on the quarterback. It just, to me, it just, it, 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 it irks the timing. It breaks the timing at times. Sometimes the quarterback just have to hold the ball a little more for that guy to get off the line of scrimmage or, or run his routes. It's, to me, especially against a team like New England that does that. But I, I think anytime you play somebody, at least in my mind, now the the. The flip side of that is if you if you're at the line of scrimmage jam and a guy beats you quick, th then you paid a big price. Right. I, I like I like uh, teams and defenses that press cover, but I also like teams that kind of mix it up, and that's when you kind of feel you, you keep an offense on edge. Because as a quarterback, if I'm getting a steady diet of press coverage, and I know there's no safety help over the top, I'm going to take three chances in a row. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and attack the weakness or that man-to-man -man coverage, especially over the last three games, what I've seen out of the Miami Dolphins. So I, I think a good balance uh, of press, I, I like press coverage, but when you're getting pressure up front, that push has yep. to be on the same tempo and same line as the aggressive Aggressive corner coverage. Yep, no doubt. Uh, Left, Jeff Bennett, Bo, uh, why don't you get into coaching? No thank you, no thank you, no thank you. First of all, I like to sleep late in the mornings, yeah, that and, I don't, and I don't like to stay up as late as they stay yeah. up. And I like to live, I like to have roots planted in the ground, man. These guys are... They're like, they're like the ultimate vagabonds, these guys. Just, it's just a tough profession. Tough profession, man. Tough profession and uh, just just not the lifestyle that I want to leave. But I give them all credit for what they do because right. they're, a, they're a dedicated – you talk about a dedicated bunch of people, man. Those guys yeah. are dedicated people. Yeah, you know what? I, I think sometimes some of the coaches I had through the years I played football were better dads to me than maybe yeah, no, the, the opportunity they had their, their own, own kids. kids. Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. All right, John. Been a pleasure. Hey, all right, man. Good to see you, buddy. All right, nice to be here with a Dolphin win, although we're not kind of doing cartwheels, but no, hey, a win's but a win. win. That's right. So we're happy with it. one and two. You're facing a one and two team in Cincinnati. Again, let me remind you, the Audible on Wednesday will be 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. So wherever you're at, you can figure out the time frame for you and catch us on Wednesday. We'll see you then. Until Wednesday, have a good couple of days. Keep things tight. We'll see you then.